Mark calling Austin. Come in, Austin. Mark calling Austin. Come in, Austin. Oh, <laughs> Mark calling Austin. Come in, you sinner eminence. Just get out of your report, Mark. Oh, yes, sir. This week, sir, I don't know what it's like to be famous on Earth. That's good. Well, sir, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. You see, most Earthlings try very hard to be recognized for what they do, but when they become stars, sir, they realize they're recognized wherever they go. You mean they lose their privacy? Well, sir, sometimes they can even lose their clothes. You see, being a star, sir, is a 24-hour job, and you can't leave your face at the office. Isn't fame its own reward? Oh, yes, sir, it is. But when you're a celebrity, everybody wants a piece of you, sir. Unless you can say no, there'll be no pieces left for yourself. I thought all stars were rich, live in mansions, and drive big eggs. I know, sir, that's the common misconception. But you see, to get that, you have to pay a very heavy price. You have responsibilities, anxieties, and... Well, to be honest, sir, some of them can't take it. I'm not buying it, Mort. Why, sir? It sounds to me like they have it made. Well, most of them do, sir, but some are victims of their own fame. Very special and talented people. People like Elvis Presley, Mel Monroe, Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, Lenny Bruce, Freddie Prince, and John Lennon. Chuck, Cam, great to see you. <laughs> yo, yo, what's up, Wales? House of Windsor, keeping it real. <laughs> Obama, yeah! <laughs> yes, indeed, yeah! The dream came true. Great God Almighty, the dream came true. Obama, Obama, Obama! <laughs> Obama, yeah! <laughs> Barack, which means blessing Hussein, don't ask. <laughs> Obama, which is an old Kenyan word for Kennedy, God bless us. <laughs> and a lot of Irish people are going, he's black Irish, he's an Obama. <laughs> but he is an eloquent, eloquent man. I know at the inauguration, people are hoping that maybe he kicks it up a notch going, what's up, Washington? <laughs> yo, 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 let's keep it real right now. I'm gonna bring out the members of my political posse in my cabinet right now. This is little Ray Ray. <laughs> This is G-Man Kanye Kobe and Colin Powell, who is bad to the bone. <laughs> We're going down Pennsylvania Avenue with the top down. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to build a basketball court in the Rose Garden. <laughs> but we do have to take a moment of silence and bid a fond farewell to George W. Bush. Yes, it's the end of the reign of George II. <laughs> the reign of error is over. America is officially out of rehab. Welcome us. <laughs> we have come back. Thank you. He is a gift to comedy, though. He is a comedy pinata. I'm going to miss him. <laughs> a man who said, I'm the decider. No, sir, you're the president. You make decisions. Deciders what they sell in the little jugs. <laughs> a lot of people. He also said, I am misunderestimated. And I went, no, not really. <laughs> and you think, what is he, what, I have to think, what is he going to do after he leaves office? No, he cannot go on a speaking tour. That's a given. <laughs> but I do think he could do stand-up comedy because he has eight years of amazing material. <laughs> he has stuff, and here's some of W's greatest hits. The question that's never asked, is our children learning? <laughs> I just found out that a lot of our imports come from other countries. <laughs> America, a country where you can put food on your family. <laughs> our enemies are looking for terrible ways to destroy this country, and so are we. <laughs> and you have to have a little sympathy, though. W comes from a family where the smart brother is named Jeb, so you have to kind of... <laughs> take a moment, just have a little moment of silence. And you can't blame the economy on him. They say the economy is essentially sound because people are considering buying things. That's like saying fat people are healthy because they might exercise. <laughs> but no, we need help. We went to the world. I like the fact the American government went all around the world and the French were going, I feel so bad for you, huh? <laughs> so good. Who 
there's $750 billion they can spare. And I'm going, the only people in the world, the Saudis. The Saudi, can you spare seven? I will give you $750 billion. All I want is a picture of Angelina Jolie and Louis Walsh. <laughs> I changed that reference for England. Thank God that worked. Thank you. <laughs> but it was the economy, the whole thing, and the whole debate. Basically, it was we had Obama, Fresh Prince, McCain, Uncle Fester on the Adams family. <laughs> And the debates were so amazing. The first debate, two people speaking in complete sentences after eight years of W, I was going, thank you, God! <laughs> I was beginning to think our electoral process was like the Special Olympics of politics. I was like, no! The second debate, McCain started to get a little like, mm, I don't know, that one. <laughs> and then the third debate, oh, wow, McCain was just like, ah, mm, mm. <laughs> He starts to look like your uncle who's on a new drug and he hasn't got the dosage right. <laughs> And you find him wandering around the mall, going, I've got a plan! I know where Osama is, tell us! I'm not gonna tell you yet! Where's the plumber? Where's Joe? Where's the plumber? Get in the car, Uncle John, get in the car. <laughs> but it was pretty wild, that whole concept. What is he doing there? That's like, and where? Where did they get Sarah Palin? Where did they find her? <laughs> wow! Did Ronald Reagan have a kid with Posh Spice? I don't know. It's like, she. It's like she came from some sort of reality show. Project Running Mate. Here she comes. Here comes Sarah. Her hobbies are breastfeeding and helicopter hunting. She can skin a moose and balance a budget. Come on down. With that shucks and all kind of, oh my gosh, oh shucks. Polar bears are not endangered, they're just unlucky. Come on. <laughs> and it was pretty amazing, too. The last few days of the election, she let her hair down, she took her glasses off. I thought the last day she'd just be like, check it out. <laughs> How do you like my northern slopes now, boy? <laughs> drill, baby, drill, drill. <laughs> you think Bill Clinton was sitting at home the whole time going, where was she when I was in office? <laughs> And Bill has some bad luck. He found the only Jewish girl who couldn't get a stain out. That is so sad. He's like, ee, ee, ee. But the whole thing is, American politics are always crazy. I live in California. We're a 60% Hispanic state. We have an Austrian governor. Even old Nazis are going, that's weird. <laughs> that is not right. And Arnold could be president if it wasn't for that tiny clause. If you're not born in America, you can't run for president. Arnold, the little immigrant boy who had a dream in a vial of anabolic steroids. <laughs> and he lives with and married to Maria Shriver, who's a Kennedy, who's getting smaller and smaller. I believe he's living off of her. I believe he's sucking the Kennedy out of her slowly but surely. And that's why he's become a moderate Republican, which is kind of cool. It's like a Volvo with a gun rack. You don't see a lot of it. <laughs> But, I was thinking, maybe there's one person, and I want to get a guy out there running, you know, and Sarah and people talk, like, who can we get that would run and make the whole world go, oh, wow. And that guy would be Jack Nicholson. <laughs> yeah, baby. He has got cooler movies than Arnold. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> we'll never have a sex scandal with Jack. He's done everybody. <laughs> I had Angelina Jolie, and afterwards, she adopted me. <laughs> and you'll never have a drug scandal. Jack has done every drug known to mankind. He's the only guy in the world that Keith Richards would go, I have to go home now, Jack. <laughs> but I'll leave you right now, because some people say that I look like Bono, and I'd have to say, stop drinking. But recently, Bono was on stage in Scotland, and it was very quiet, like right now. And he started clapping his hands, and he clapped his hands, and he said, every time I clap my hands, a child in Africa dies. And from the back of the Scottish audience, someone went, then stop clapping your hands! <laughs> Good night, thank you, sir!
I'm the one that they're singing about. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, I'm the Stars and Stripes forever. Star Spangled Banner. You can call me Old Glory, but let's just keep it simple. Uh, just call me Flag. <laughs> oh, oh, say, can you see? Okay. Uh, little flag humor. <laughs> Well, you probably don't recognize me. You say, who is that, Evil Knievel? No way. Yeah, you see, you can't recognize me because... I'm in my birthday suit, yes. I'm wearing the original 13 here. Yeah. I remember Miss Betsy sitting there going, Oh, this could be the start of something big. Oh, Tom, don't be a pain. Yes. I was born June 14th, 1777. That makes me a Gemini. <laughs> I'm kind of unpredictable, crazy. <laughs> yes, I like the outdoors, and I'm the life of any party, whether it be Republican, Democrat, Independent, Socialist, anything libertarian, I'll be there. <laughs> you know, I'm 204 years old. People say, Flag, how do you stay so young? Is it jogging? No. Is it tennis? No. It's waving. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know, we're talking about billowing, furling, and unfurling. Richard Simmons, eat your heart out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it hasn't always been easy for me, though. I had a tough puberty. <laughs> Yeah, war, famine, invasion. And 1861, uh, well, I had a little skin problem that broke out into 34 stars. But now, well, little patience, and look what we got now. Look at this. Hold on here. Ha-ha! Ha-ha! Oh, 60! Everybody's on here. Look at this. Alaska! <laughs> Hawaii! Yeah, we got your Tennessee. How are you doing today? Here's Vermont. You can't get there from here. Oh, and there's California. For sure, totally. Like I said before, you know, I, I had a tough time for a while. I've been in a lot of wars. They fired missiles and muskets at me, but you know, come the dawn's early light, I'm still there. You know what I'm talking about? You know, I've been made into everything from designer jeans to t-shirts, and I've even been a cape for Mick Jagger. Well, all right! The Rockets Red Glare, well, all right! But people haven't always been respectful to me. Sometimes it's been tough. There have been some people try and spit on me, trample me, burn me. Foreigners and occasionally some Americans, too, but I don't let it get me down because I'm not a stay-at-home kind of flag. You know, I've been to Europe. I've been to both North and South Pole. I was at Iwo Jima. Recently, I've even been to the moon. Everything. You see me in all sorts of different postures. When I'm like this, that means everything is okay. When I'm upside down, well, put on your Mae West and hit the deck. <laughs> but when I'm like this, well, that's not my favorite position because, well, that's half-masked. I don't, I don't mean to bum you out. I, I didn't come here to depress you. But I got to tell you something honestly. I haven't been getting out much lately. I guess it's not very chic to put up the flag anymore, you know. Muffin and I have a flag, but we haven't found it for very long. Hey, but look at it this way. Don't look at it as saluting me. Look at it as saluting yourselves. You know, hey, I'm just a flag, a symbol. You're the people. If I may say so from here, long may you wave. I'm fine now. <laughs>
I'm a reformed alcoholic. <laughs> I feel so much better about myself. I am fine. No, you have that double vodka. I'll be over in the corner kicking the cat. <laughs> I realized when I became a reformed alcoholic, I said, hey, I'm the same asshole. I just have fewer dents in my car. And then there are your friends who smoke marijuana going, John, man, alcohol's a crutch. <laughs> really? Really, Captain Herbal Life? <laughs> really? God. You just macrame your ass into the couch and you're giving me shit? <laughs> Remember when you get so stoned you can actually see a fly in space going, mm. <laughs> And when you get stoned, your discretion goes out the window. You could be eating kitty litter going, mm, this is crunchy, man. <laughs> and the horrible thing is people who get stoned try and get their animals stoned to make them feel better. It's not bad enough that you proved that Darwin was wrong. You're gonna take the whole family with you. There's your dog going, please don't do this to me. I've just learned to lick my own genitals. Leave me alone. Don't do this to me. And you're inside stone going, oh God, help me now. And the next thing is you start to get hungry. You think you can leave the house, you liar. You think, I'm gonna be fine, man. I've got, I've got to leave the house, I'm gonna be okay. If you could just find your goddamn feet, yeah, you'll be okay. <laughs> then you think you can drive. You think, yeah, I'll be okay. I'll drive, I'll drive, I'll be okay. And you have one of those new Japanese cars where you open the door and it goes, your door is open. <laughs> and if you're stoned, you're going, I knew that. <laughs> so you get in the car, you think, yes, I'm now, I've got it. I'm, oh, the keys, okay, fine. The keys, fine. Okay, reverse, fine, okay. <laughs> Then you're going down the freeway. You think you're traveling at light speed. You think Scotty's sitting next to you going, Jim, you can't push it any faster. <laughs> it's just a shovel Jim. Don't drag it over the edge. <laughs> Your hair is blowing in the wind and the window isn't even open. <laughs> you're that stone. You turn on the radio. You understand everything. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly on the radio, man stoned on freeway. How do they know? How do they know? God damn it. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Suddenly in the rear view mirror, red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. How patriotic. Yeah. Shit, the police. Eat everything in the ashtray. Eat everything in the ashtray. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, pull it over. Pull it over. All of a sudden, you start rehearsing. What seems to be the problem, officer? What seems to be the problem, officer? What seems to be the problem? I'm fine. I'm fine. What seems to be the problem? Nice day, officer. What seems to be the problem? Usually, you're stopped by a motorcycle cop. He gets off his bike like... God, am I incredibly well endowed. <laughs> I'll get your door. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> From inside your car comes this Colombian sauna, like... <clears throat> Suddenly, he's going, I'm hungry, I don't know why. <laughs> You're looking at him. You've rehearsed your line. What seems to be the problem? What seems to be the problem? You look at him and go... <laughs> <laughs> oh, and as you look at him, his face turns into a cheeseburger. You lunge! <laughs> Emergency, the exits are here, 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 I want to undo that bow and get to know you. You don't know about real loss. Because it only occurs when you love something more than you love yourself. I doubt you've ever dared to love anybody that much. Hey, that's it for me. I'm out of here. That's the end of the Adrian Crown Hour. But I'm going to turn you over right now to Mr. Warren. Dan the Tan. Never Tan. You behave like a buffoon. Thank you. Need for acceptance. Would you 
you must trust that your beliefs are unique, your own, even though others may think them odd or unpopular, even though the herd may go, that's bad. Seize the day. Because we are food for worms, lads. Because believe it or not, each and every one of us in this room is one day going to stop breathing, turn cold, and die. <laughs>